What's up, guys? It's Ben with 2020 Election Predictions. And today I'm going to be going over this R progress model. And I think it's really, really interesting. On the, on the service level, it just kind of looks like a normal model. Um, we kind of have our, like, we have our safe states. We have our um, likely states. Uh, we have our um, lean states. And then we have our toss-up states today. But for, for each state, they give a uh, percentage chance that e each is going to win. And they actually give margins of victory and, like, a projected um, popular vote outcome, which I think is really interesting. So right now, as, as we can see, um, Biden has an 80% chance to win. Donald Trump has a 20% to win. And right now, um, if we just look at these states that uh, lean likely or safe to Joe Biden, he already has enough to win. Um, the tipping point state in this scenario would be Wisconsin, um, which is interesting because if if Joe Biden were to lose Wisconsin, and Donald Trump were to win all these swing states, and he he were to win, uh, he would win. So um, Wisconsin is the state that the entire election is going to come down to. But anyway, um, we, we can see over time that uh, Joe Biden's chances have improved. Um, they predict that Joe Biden's going to win the um, popular vote by about six point seven percent, and then also by about eight million votes. Um, but let's click on the state of Florida because one thing I like about this model is it does something that no other model does. So right now, they basically have Florida as a toss-up. Um, they say Joe Biden has a 50.4% chance of winning Florida, even though right now they project that Joe Biden would win by, I mean, about 100,000 votes, which is not a small margin. It's it's outside of the 0.5 percentage that uh, automatically uh, would do a recount um, like there was in like the 2018 midterms elections. But although that Joe Biden has been up pretty consistently in the polls, I think it, on the 538, it's, it's an average of six points. Um, they project it's going to be within in a percentage point. And I think it's because they're using more than polling data. Um, one thing that's fairly interesting, I think, is um, they're looking at the change in voter registration. So consistently, um, if we go state by state, um, we see that typically Democrats are registering at higher rates than Republicans. But in Florida, it, it's different. So typically in the swing states like Arizona, Texas, um, even states kind of in the Rust Belt, we've seen that the, the Democratic turnout machine um, tends to be stronger than than um, the re Republican voter re registration. And this is because um, younger voters tend to be Democrat. Um Typically, uh, new legal immigrants um, who are just getting the right to vote tend to vote um, toward uh, uh, tend to vote Democratic on average. And I don't know if this is accounting for um, all the ex felons um, that can now vote. In 2018, there was a um, ballot initiative, um, and it, it uh, voted overwhelmingly for that. Like gave um, some ex felons who were stripped of their right to vote after they committed a felony. So. They will be added in the 2020 election. I don't know if this accounts for them. Um, I would assume it does because they would have to register to vote again. Um, but let's look at the change in voter demographics in the state of Florida. Um, I've, I've done a video talking about how I literally think the most important state in 2020 is, is Florida. And if that Florida goes to Joe Biden, then I think the election is over. You can call it right there. So let's look at some maybe some changes right now, and and this is um this is uh polling data. So in in twenty twenty in twenty sixteen we have the real data, right here we have the polling data. The most um significant thing I can see right now is just the fact that um Donald Trump has been losing um support among older voters right now, which is really concerning because Florida has a lot of older voters it, uh around the country disproportionately. Florida has like a ton of older voters. So this the 65% block. So in 2016, um, Donald Trump won these voters by 57%, um, which is very good. Um, and he won Florida by over a point, a what percentage point. Right now, this has come down to uh, six percentage points of 51%. And you might think, look, this isn't bad. Um, 65, uh, 65 plus um, people, they don't account for that much of the ele electorate. Well, they actually do. Um, this uh, age of voting box vote at the highest rate out of people around the country. They say young people don't vote, but this group, they, they vote. They vote every time. Um, I think it was ingrained with them when they were younger. And just 
typically, I think when people grow older, they realize more the importance of voting. And um, in Florida, especially, I mean, people move here for retirement. And um, so I think it's pretty interesting. So this is a number that we're definitely going to be looking at. Um, Overall, the the rest of it, it seems pretty um, similar. You think, um, uh, I don't see any like huge changes that we can look at right now. I think um, post-graduate, he's lost like one percentage point. But see, this is the state of Florida, and this is a model that I'll definitely be looking at going forward. Um, Let's click on a few other states. (laughs) It's my dog. Um, One other state that I think will be very important is the state of um, Arizona. Um, This is a state that Donald Trump won in 2016 by a pretty good margin, but it has just been um, trending leftward for a while. And in the 2018 midterms, um, Martha McSally got beat by Kristen Sinema. So right now, this model projects that... um, uh, Donald Trump is going to lose the state by 1.8 points. And over time, this has changed for sure. Um, but this was just back in 2019. And you see that Democrats have registered a lot more voters than Republicans, which makes sense because Arizona is a border state with um, a high um, Hispanic population. You, you, you're seeing a lot more Hispanics um, being registered to vote because they're new immigrants, presumably. Um, and, uh, this doesn't really say the percentage of votings, but also you, you, you can see here the, the polling in Arizona is a lot closer. I think 538 had it about 2.5 points. So the actual results, um, you see Joe Biden, they projected will be, uh, win by 1.8 percentage points. So if, if Donald Trump loses Arizona, this is a, another state where I don't really see too many paths for victory for him if he loses Arizona. So, Florida and Arizona are must wins for Donald Trump to stay competitive. Um, let's just look at Texas, for example. Um, this state really should not be a swing state um, in terms of if you're on the Trump campaign looking at this. Um, I I do project that Donald Trump will win the state. Now, I, I think 1.9 percentage points is pretty reasonable. Um, mm, darn, they, they don't have... Uh, voter registration numbers, but you see that the polls are kind of going back and forth. And the average of the polls, I think Donald Trump is for sure up, but we saw this poll that had Biden up by five points. And I think it scared a lot of um, conservatives and it got a lot of media attention. Um, Texas is the second most populous state. So, and a lot of people are moving to Texas. So if Texas goes, I mean, even more so than Florida and Arizona, then there's Donald Trump has no path to victory if texas goes blue i I don't think it will go blue this go this go around but um it's pretty uh it'll be very interesting to look at so we can uh look at this state some more um i i honestly do agree with the characterization right now that these rust belt states do favor joe biden i understand that the models had this exact same thing in 2016 and i i do think that there is going to be some shy uh Trump voter effect. So maybe these margins get reduced. But even in 2016, the models didn't have it this drastic. I mean, um, and I, I also think these models are trying to account for some of the, the mistakes that they made in 2016. Um, the last thing that I like about this model that I think is just pretty interesting is like, obviously, the pop popular vote doesn't matter. It's kind of fun to do this too. Um, but this just kind of looks at how the popular vote breaks down. Obviously, when we look at the map, the geography doesn't represent where the main population centers. You have a lot of people in California, Texas, and New York. But one thing is, I thought it was pretty interesting. So the third um, state with the most Republican votes is California, um, which I think is very interesting. And like New York has 2.7 million um, votes. And I don't think a lot of people like realize this. And, and same with on the de- Democratic side, states that I would say typically go Republican. I mean, Florida kind of goes back and forth, but Texas goes Republican. It has a lot of Democratic votes. So I think going forward, um, states like Texas and Florida are going to get a, a lot of attention. California, frankly, is just too far gone. You see 9 million here. 
and 4.3 million here. So, I mean, there's literally double um, Democratic votes in um, California than Republican votes. So I think this kind of just puts it in context, but obviously the popular vote does not matter at all. This is the only thing that matters in um, looking at the electoral vote. So I really hope that y'all liked um, this video, and this is kind of going to be my first video um, in a series of looking at different models. So be on the lookout for that, and please subscribe here if you haven't already.